Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the Autosomo DNA results, uh, the traits, predicted phenotype, and of course the ethnic results of Sungir 3, which is a upper Paleolithic Cro-Magnon from Russia. You can see it's dated to 33,000 years before uh, the Common Era, before the birth of Christ. His Y DNA seems to be C1A2, which is uh, nowadays most typical for East Asians, and his mitochondrial DNA is U2, which is a very stereotypically European mitochondrial DNA. We are going to start with his appearance. So, when it comes to Nashakot, Nashakot predicts for him to have Greek shaped nose, black hair, definitely very dark color of hair, 99% likelihood of black hair for him, uh, dark, brown, dark brown color eyes. We're going to see uh, the underpinnings behind this result. So, Let's start with EDAR. This individual does not have East Asian EDAR, so does not have um, necessarily East Asian facial traits. And we don't really see East Eurasian in this result either. We see 0% East Asian in the results, so this individual doesn't have uh, East Eurasian facial morphology. That's very apparent uh, from this result. He has uh, does not have the uh, West Eurasian light skin of mutation in SLC 45A2, so probably quite dark skin. I think my Nashakot, my um, uh, web version of Nashakot is going to give him a pretty high score for intermediate or dark color of skin. He does not have blue haplotype 3 or blue haplotype 2. What is surprising a little bit is he is heterozygous for blue haplotype 1. And, uh, you know, blue haplotype 1 seems to be quite... Uh, quite old. It's a very old mutation if it's present in an upper Paleolithic individual, right? Um, what else is there? He does not have any of the light skin variants in SLC 45A2. So yeah, he's definitely going to have a dark skin prediction with my tool. Let's go ahead and see what he scores with the web version of Nashakot. So with the web version of Nashakot, he is scoring, it looks like dark brown eyes at a likelihood of 85%, definitely very dark color of eyes. Once again, black color hair and dark or brown skin, yes, that's right. So this individual doesn't really have any of the light skin variants. And by the way, my um, for skin color prediction, it's not just SLC 45A2, SLC 2045. There's also a couple more genes that play a role in a, in a prediction. There's a seep. Uh, a seep plays a role. There's a couple more. I don't even really remember all that I've included there, but a couple more play a role in the prediction. And this is his predicted eye color with the um, Nashakol phenotype predictor, with the web version. Actually, we can compare that with the predicted eye color with uh, the executable version. You can see they're pretty different. The executable version doesn't really uh, draw eyes that are this dark. It kind of makes them really red looking, really like orange or red, but not really dark. It, I can't really get it to accurately display the shade as dark as it is. So, you know, kind of, I think the, I think the, um, the web version is a little bit better in terms of the prediction for eye color. For Oka 2 or Herc 2 or eye color predictor, this is also looking very dark. So this is only taking into account the genotypes in Oka 2 and Herc 2. Uh, in case you want to know what genotypes it is, it's not. It's not only this, because if you look at this, this is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that's 7 SNPs. No, it's not only this, there's a couple more that play a role. Uh, I can show you them here actually, so we can count. It's, it's everything here. So all of this plays a role in the Oka 2 and Herc 2 eye color estimate. Uh, not just the seven that are shown on the screen that are the most important ones. So we're going to go ahead and look at his polygenic risk scores. For the polygenic risk scores, he's scoring very low odds of schizophrenia, below average odds of type 2 diabetes, and slightly above average odds of Alzheimer's. We're going to see why the score is the way it is right now. We're going to look at the monogenic traits here. He's heterozygous for comps met variation, so he has one met allele, one of the warrior alleles that uh, sort of increase the amount of dopamine. And he has TT genotype in this variation of MAOA, so this is once again a warrior genotype. Overall, he's more warrior than warrior. We can pretty much clearly see that from these results because he's warrior in MAOA and he's intermediate in COMT. He's probably got a little bit more dopamine in his system than what's typical for the average like non-white person. Uh, white people tend to be warriors. Uh, people who of other races tend to be warriors. That's kind of how it goes. Um, he does not have any no-go learner variants in drd 2 pro phenetine pro which means he has higher number of dopamine due to receptor sites in the brain and slightly higher odds of schizophrenia. Um, he has AG genotype in TAC1, which is very surprising because the ALU in TAC1 is kind of rare for modern humans. Uh, pretty much every Neanderthal monkey, like gorilla, ape, a chimpanzee, whatever, pretty much all the non-humans tend to have AA genotype here. Humans tend to have the GG genotype in TAC1. 
Uh, he seems to have heterozygous genotype 1A, 1G allele, which is kind of uncommon for humans today, and it uh, leads to a very significant decrease in the number of dopamine due to receptor sites in the brain, a uh, significant increase of likelihood of alcoholism, Parkinson's, ADHD, all that stuff. He has short form 5-HTTLPR uh, here and short form 5-HTTLPR here as well, so it looks like he's got short form 5-HTTLPR, slightly higher odds of depression, stuff like that. Uh, when it comes to... When it comes to... This, okay, so he's got GG here in DRD2, which is the typical gene type for most humans, leads to slightly lower risk of schizo nicotine dependence. And is there anything else that's interesting here? Okay, so he's got CC here in DRD2, which leads to higher odds of schizophrenia. And he also has CC here in T rank 1, which leads to slightly higher odds of bipolar and schizophrenia. So, uh, Aside from the stuff that's here on the screen, there's a couple more variations that contribute to the score for schizophrenia. It seems like if you just look at the stuff that's on the screen, he would have a pretty high or like at least an average score. But clearly, uh, there is more stuff that was found in his file that's simply not on the screen that contributed to him having such a low score for schizophrenia in particular. He does not have the European lactose persistence mutation, and he has two variants for higher levels of empathy in OXTR, very interesting doesn't have the sociopath gene, um, does not have type 1 diabetes, and he's got some genotypes for lower risk of type 2 diabetes. I think his score for type 2 diabetes was below average, was it? Yeah, it's below average. So he's got below average score for type 2 diabetes, and he's got above average score for Alzheimer's. Okay, so for hemochromatosis, whoa, that's interesting. So he's actually heterozygous for the his 63 um, ASP mutation. He has one of the variants for hemochromatosis in, in, this, um, in this variation, which is kind of interesting. So this is probably the earliest. Uh, I think I can clearly say that this is the earliest individual with the hemochromatosis risk variants. Uh, so the Celtic curse, the, the earliest carrier of the Celtic curse mutation, you could say, of the hemochromatosis. For Alzheimer's, we're going to figure out why he's scoring so high for Alzheimer's, above average. Um, and I think it's because of this genotype right here, which means one APOE2 allele in the APOE gene. So this might also be, this might not just be the earliest carrier of the hemochromatosis mutations. This might also be the earliest carrier of the APOE Alzheimer's mutations. I'm not sure. Is it, um, maybe it's not the earliest, but it, it's the earliest of all the ancient people I've analyzed. It does not have micro P. Once again, no micro P. Increased cranial size and 2% higher IQ, slightly higher IQ. Uh, it seems like if you just look at the variants that have to do with IQ on my panel, the three of them, he seems to have a slightly higher IQ than average. Uh, no variants for increased pain sensitivity, better performing muscles, likely sprinter rather than endurance athlete. And he does not have uh, the East Asian EDAR variations here, but he does have East Asian EDAR variants in this variation, right? So he's got some uh, likely... So it looks like he's got some East Asian facial traits based on his genotype here in EDAR. This is not uh, the typical... Uh, th this is not the variation of EDAR that that uh, all the other services look for. This is something that only my service looks for, actually. But it is also play. It also plays a part in phenotype. It also plays a part in shovel-shaped incisors, stuff like that. It plays a part. And he seems to have East Asian facial traits based on his genotype here in EDAR. However, West Eurasian facial traits based on his genotype in this variation of EDAR, right? So he's not an East Asian flusher, lower lo odds of alcoholism, normal risk of esophageal cancer. In case you don't know what Asian flushing is, it's a phenomenon that affects East Asians primarily, uh, where if they drink a, lot of it, a little bit of alcohol, they flush up, like their cheeks turn red, and they, get, they don't tolerate alcohol too well whatsoever. All right, so uh, he has... CT here in OCT1, which leads to slightly increased odds of cannabis-induced psychosis. Uh, but it's I'm not sure what the ancestral or the derived allele here is. I think the derived allele is the one that protects from cannabis-induced psychosis. So this would be actually him having the derived allele. He's, he's, has, he's got one derived allele here in this variation. So he's got one allele that protects against cannabis-induced psychosis, which I think is pretty impressive. Uh, I don't think um, these Cro-Magnons were smoking weed recreationally. I don't think that's something they did. And um, does he have any albinism variants? No, it doesn't look like he has any of the albinism variants. No albino variants, no Melanesian, Melanesian blonde hair variants, but he does have one of the Mediterranean, familiar Mediterranean fever variants, which is kind of surprising because familiar Mediterranean fever is most common in, you know, Mediterraneans, specifically Jews, like Jews, Arabs, um, Turks, Armenians. This individual has one risk variant for it. So 
I don't think one risk variant is gonna do a lot, but you know he does have one risk variant for familiar Mediterranean fever. Uh, he's got 65 efficiency in, in processing folic acid based on his genotype in ABTHFR. Uh, he seems to have also average slightly higher blood pressure. Uh, based on his genotype here in MTHFR, that leads to 65% uh, efficiency in processing folic acid. That also leads to slightly higher than average odds for a variety of illnesses from autism to coronary heart disease. And now we're going to go ahead and look at his ethnic calculator results. We're going to look at ethnic calculator results with my calculator first, my ethnicity calculator. Then we're going to look at his ethnic calculator results with everything else. Right, so with G25, I'm not, I'm not saying anything else. I'm, I'm saying with G25. It's just my calculator and G25. These are the two calculators for ethnicity we're going to use in this video. All right, so we're going to start with my calculator. We're going to do all that. And with my calculator, he is closest to uh, Caucasians, Sarmatians, Caucasians, uh, Sarazm people from Tajikistan in Neolithic Tajiks. Uh, this one, Volga Bur Burtas from Volga. And Bakshin seems to be closest to various like Central Asians and Caucasian people, right? That's what it looks like with my... Uh, with my oracle, we're going to go ahead and compare that with G25 because I have his G25 as well. With G25, he's closest to Roma from Bilbao, Granada, all kinds of like Spanish Roma people, right? Um, Tatars are also here, Tatar from Kazan, Tatar from Lima, there's Tajiks here. So yeah, it's kind of the same, it's kind of very similar result actually, the G25 in my calculator, it's kind of interesting. Uh, okay. For the mixed mode oracle, with my calculator, he's scoring like this. 32% speaking as two-corded wear, 13% South Asian, 8.6 Sungit uh, sex, then a little bit of... Like, it seems like a mixture of European. There's Neanderthal here as well. It seems like a mixture of European and basically some kind of something else. European plus something else. And with G25, we're going to see what he scores. It's pretty much the same. It's also European plus something else. But we're going to go ahead and make this less clustered. Uh, less like impossible to read less impossible to understand we're going to limit this to three populations and with g25 when you limit it to three populations he's getting modeled as 63 percent arcadian 32 percent jarava jarava is um uh, jarava is in south india it's andamanese people and five percent johuan which are south african hunter gatherers in case you're wondering why the super high distance the reason for the sup i mean the super low distance the reason for the super low distance is that this is actually a simulated file. Uh, I didn't actually go and pay $24 for G25 for him. I don't really feel the need to. Uh, so, you know, it's it's Arcadian plus Jarava plus Andamanese plus um, South African Hunter Gather. We're going to see with my calculator. Limit this to three populations. And with my calculator, it's actually a little bit different. With my calculator, it's actually speaking, of, it's actually corded where Berber. A little bit of Berber and Yamlan. Uh, we're gonna try and do some manipulations here. We're gonna try to five populations and distance column to 0 0.5 with G25. What are we going to see here? Let's see. We are going to see this. We're going to see Basque, Finnish, a uh, Boom Boomji. Uh, what, is, what is Boomji? Boomij. I don't even know what Boomij is. That's crazy. Something really exotic. I think that's South Asia. It's got to be in South Asia. Uh, Nasoi, which has also got to be in South Asia, and Homanisan, which we, we know what that is, that's in South Africa. We're going to see what my calculator, we're going to limit this to five populations, set this in count to 0.5, and we're going to see something. Okay, this is what we see. We see Burtas from Volga, from uh, medieval period Volga, uh, a little bit of BMAC, and we see, speaking of two corded wear, and we see Toland's. Uh, Tolens from Germany, Tolens warrior from Germany. That's what we get with my calculator. And this is what we get with G25 for this individual. Um, just looking at the G25 results, because I think G25 would be a little bit more in line with what you're going to see with GD match. This individual, this upper Paleolithic Cromanion, has a lot of South Asian shift, very clearly. Uh, this individual is not exactly, he's clearly a West Eurasian, but he has a South Asian shift. Uh, for example, the reason be because of that he's scoring like Arcadian plus Jarava. I think with GD match he would score maybe 32% South I South Indian, South Asian. I think I don't know, but you can check. Um, the link to download the file will be in the description. 
So you can literally just go and check what he scores with GD match if you want to. Um, I, I am predicting that it's going to be around 32% South Asian and the rest is going to be um, West, Euro like West Euro European and shit and like South African, whatever. But there's got to be 32% South Asian in the result. That's what I'm expecting. Uh, thanks for watching until the end. You can download this file in 23andMe format from link which is in the description of the video. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Goodbye.